It's day seven of this experiment and I don't really think it's working out for me. But anyway, here are the pros. A while ago, I did a video on the carnivore diet where I ate only meat and eggs for about a month. I wanted to try the carnivore diet one more time, or rather the lion diet, where I consume just meat, salt, and water. I do have some food at home, which doesn't fit in this diet, which I don't wanna throw away. A couple of bananas, a couple of avocados, some blueberries, raspberries, a couple dates, and a small piece of chocolate. And I think that's it. One important thing to keep in mind is that I'll be consuming mostly conventional meat. You'd think the first day would be the easiest, but nope, temptation is just around the corner. First, I had to go around noon to a pastry shop to take pictures and then to a restaurant and both of them offered me food afterwards. But fortunately, they were both vegan, so it was easy to resist. And now, seven hours later, I'm finally having my first proper meal of the day. Today is the third day and it's the first day that my first meal was completely carnivore. That means meat, salt and water. I had previously mentioned that uh, I'll be consuming conventional meat. However, fat is where the toxins get stored. So I'll be a bit more selective about where I get my fat. It's day seven of this experiment, but day five of the strict lion diet. And I don't really think it's working out for me. But anyway, here are the pros. I don't really feel bloated no matter how much I eat. I would say I'm probably eating around a kilogram of lean meat a day and anywhere between 100 to 200 grams of fat. There seems to be a war, some could even say it's political, against saturated fats specifically, but I'm gonna show you how you can easily turn saturated fats into unsaturated fats. You take your fat and you either cut it into smaller pieces or grind it up. It's only a matter of personal preference. Then you find your saturation levels right here on the right and bring that all the way down. That's it. Please subscribe for more 28 second tutorials. Another pro, I never really feel hungry or have cravings. And the cons, I sort of feel like I'm fasting. I feel very similar to when I actually fasted over a year ago for 72 hours. Lethargic, low energy, low stamina. I went to play soccer this morning and I could barely keep up. And that's not to say that I could always keep up before, but I feel that with this diet on top of that, it's not really helping. My plan was to do the lion diet for at least a week and then add eggs. However, I feel like I've gotten the effects of it already. So I will add eggs tomorrow, which would then make it the carnivore diet, if we're being technical. Yesterday on day 10, I had one of the worst mornings. I had almost no energy. And on top of that, I felt nauseous and faint. My guess for my lack of energy was due to lack of carbs, mainly fruit, which I used to consume daily. My plan was to add a low carb fruit like cucumbers and pickles to my diet. But then I learned that beef liver, unlike muscle meat, actually has a few carbs. So on day 10, yesterday, for my first meal, I had 100 grams of calf liver and around 300 grams of beef. And it did help. I had more energy during my workout and I also slept better that night. However, something was still lacking. One of the things I was hoping this diet would prevent is muscle cramps. I get them more often than not, especially when I do a very intense workout. I did get chest cramps on day seven after doing a bunch of push-ups. So cramps are still a part of my life. Muscle cramps. I'm going to do strict carnivore, just meat and eggs for five more days, including today, because on day 16, I'm going away for six days. Although I will still consume a meat-based diet while I'm away, it definitely won't be strict carnivore. And I may even indulge in a few things. I got back from my trip on the 21st of November. Then I got a bit sick and was constantly drinking tea with lemon and honey. But I was still eating beef and eggs every day. It wasn't until December 1st that I went back to full carnivore. Today is the 12th of December and day 12 of strict carnivore since I stopped being sick. And the 42nd day of this experiment, although not consecutive. Strict carnivore is not working out for me. Oh, I don't really think it's working out for me. The question now is, what new food do I introduce into this diet? My goal is to prevent fatigue and muscle cramps. According to the internets, lack of magnesium could be causing muscle cramps. Nuts and seeds are abundant in magnesium. I used to eat seeds and nuts daily 
especially peanut butter. And I had muscle cramps back then as often as I do now. So I want to avoid nuts and seeds in general, as well as the plant kingdom as a whole. Another option is dark chocolate, but that's my Achilles heel as it's near impossible to eat in moderation. The only other feasible option is fish. Not a fan, but salmon, mackerel, and halibut are apparently high in magnesium. But what do I know? It's not like I have a magnesium telescope to look deep into the fish. So another week of carnivore plus fish. Adding fish didn't really prevent muscle cramps. I got a muscle cramp while putting on my jacket. I had, however, done a bicep workout one hour prior. On day 48, I decided to watch the World Cup final with a few friends, and this was more of a pizza party than a watch party, but I decided to make an exception and I did not hold back. And later that evening, I had a hamstring cramp while sitting down with the right leg tucked in. On day 49, I went back to my diet, but now with cheese. On day 53, I had a couple small pieces of cheese in the morning, and then I fasted until around 8 p.m. I had planned to go to a restaurant with a few friends where I knew I would consume a large amount of carbs. One of the hardest things about this diet is that you pretty much have to abandon your social life. I'm not the most social person, but even for me, it's quite difficult. So I decided to make an exception. I went and ate two calzoni, one savory, one sweet. I had done a rather intense pull-up workout earlier that day and an arm workout the day before that I experienced one of the worst bicep cramps while cutting the sweet calzone. Usually I just have to straighten my arm and it goes away, but this one lingered on for several seconds. The next morning on day 54, I went back to meat, eggs, cheese and milk. But on day 57, I decided to remove cheese and milk as they started to cause some plumbing problems. I decided to do some research on ketosis and long story short, it is possible to burn fat as a fuel source for aerobic exercise. However, according to the research, you need carbs for anaerobic exercise. And since I play soccer, where you're mostly sprinting and do high intensity workouts, I decided to add carbs, but not just any carbs. What does that mean? On day 57, I decided to make one minor, but hopefully effective change. Meat and eggs are still the staples of my diet. But now I will consume a banana before my workout and another one halfway through to see if that helps with energy levels. And I will also be eating pickles because in the past that kind of helped with preventing cramps. It is day 86 since the start of this experiment and I have no idea what day it is since I last shaved. Let's do a quick review. On day 60, I attended another social event and broke my diet again. I gained two kilograms, 2.1 to be specific. I went back to carnivore plus bananas and pickles the very next day, on the same day that I was traveling. When I'm traveling, I do cook if I'm staying at a place with a kitchen. This time, unfortunately, there was no kitchen, so I bought some burger patties. I also bought something called quark or quack, if I want to be pretentious. Quark is kind of like yogurt, but even better. For the second part of my trip, starting on day 64, I stayed at a place with a kitchen, which meant I could cook. Before arriving at my Airbnb, I stopped to buy some groceries and then made some of the best burgers I've had in a while before wrapping up my day with some housewife duties. I broke my diet again on the last day of my trip, day 66 that is. I had been walking all day, so I decided to get a crepe stuffed with chocolate sauce and shredded coconut. On my way home, I made one more stop for one essential item and one non-essential item. And I finished that non-essential item while prepping my meal for my train ride back home the next day. I also got offered chocolate in the train and couldn't resist. Let's talk about bananas for a moment. The banana, since as long as I can remember, has been not only my favorite fruit, but my favorite food in general. Adding them back to my diet has made a significant difference, especially during my workouts. I was under the assumption that I had to limit myself to two a day and consume those two only during my workout. I thought that if I ate more than two or even just ate them not during my workout, it might cause fat gain but that hasn't turned out to be the case at all. I now eat three to four bananas a day, depending on how active a day I have. On day 74, I ate seven bananas and gained no weight at all. Does that mean that I now eat seven bananas a day? No, that was an exception, and I actually needed to consume them for the energy. One of the worst things about this diet is that you can't really snack on anything, but one of the best things about this diet is that you rarely need to snack. Although I'm quite disciplined when it comes to food, temptation is always right around the corner or sometimes right in front of my face when I'm doing a food photo shoot. The banana has proven to be the perfect antidote to that temptation.
is now day 167. I know what you're thinking. What about vegetables? Short answer. Slightly longer answer. I did have some grilled vegetables on day 90 and all I got was bloated and all I could give was gas. To make matters worse, plants provide little to no energy. The devil, however, must be given his due. Some plants do have healing properties. You've probably heard the saying, let food be thy medicine. That's idiotic. Let food be thy nourishment. Let medicine be thy medicine. If a plant does have healing properties, then consume it when you need it. You don't take a headache pill for a headache you don't have. I don't have a headache. I'm just preparing. The opposite also applies. Case in point, when I first tried carnivore, I was so stubborn that I refused to drink tea even when I had a sore throat, despite knowing that it would speed up the healing process. As you saw earlier in the video, I no longer avoid tea, especially when I'm sick. Starting around day 100, I decided to prove that fruit, no matter how much you eat, does not cause weight gain. At the time, I was eating one to two bananas a day, and sometimes also an orange, and my weight would fluctuate one to two pounds every day. Then I switched to oranges only, four to five a day. The graph speaks for itself. The following week, I switched to bananas only, four to seven a day, and on some days, up to nine. Again, the graph doesn't lie. Does fruit cause weight gain? No, I did not need to consume five oranges a day or seven bananas a day. I was intentionally overeating fruit to see what would happen. Yes, I gained weight. And although fruit, especially sweet fruit, can be addictive, as long as I first nourished myself sufficiently with animal fat and protein, only by forcing myself to overeat fruit did I gain weight. Moving on, muscle cramps. Yes, they're still here and they usually happen after I've trained or overtrained certain muscle groups. Cramps are more of an inconvenience than an actual problem, so I haven't bothered to look too much into it. What do I eat now? In the morning, I eat yogurt with fruit, salt, and honey. A lot of honey. Not enough honey. I eat my second and main meal whenever I want, but not quite. I eat when I'm hungry, but that's also not true. It depends on my schedule. It can be at any time of day, but it's only once a day. Other than that, I snack on fruit and those beef bites that I showed earlier. I also drink a soft drink every now and then, especially when I'm offered one while working. Just to clarify, I don't eat steak every day. Sometimes it's ground beef. If our mirror from six months ago could see my current self, he would be in shock by the amount of sugar that I'm consuming every day. He would be in even bigger shock to discover that I feel great. Whenever people think of sugary foods, this is what they picture. I don't blame them. Do an image search of sugary foods and that's what comes up. We've been convinced to think that sugar is the problem in those food concoctions. Sugar is just one ingredient, and I would argue the only good one. The real culprit is polyunsaturated fats, aka seed oils. They are virtually in all processed and packaged foods. It's near impossible to avoid them. Almost all restaurants use some type of seed oil for cooking. You could order the fattiest ribeye steak only to then discover that it's been cooked in grapeseed oil instead of its own delicious saturated fat. You know what kind of oil or fat they cook the meat in? Pretty sure soybean oil. Let me double check. With okay, you. all right. We usually use peanut oil. When I first introduced carbs into my carnivore diet, it was just moderate amounts of fruit. I've upped my sugar intake exponentially since then. I'm not going to try to explain the science behind it, but I would strongly recommend that you check out Cow's Eat Grass blog on Instagram, or if you wanna go straight to the source, then look up Ray Peat. If sugar does cause weight gain, I must be the exception, because as I mentioned earlier, I've upped my sugar intake significantly in the past six months, yet my weight has remained static. A couple of winters ago, I consumed grains on a daily basis for a couple of weeks, and I reached 152 pounds, the heaviest I have ever been. And I'm someone who's always had trouble gaining weight. I was still working out back then, but that wasn't enough to keep the weight down. Point being, grains are what causes you to gain weight, not sugar. I strongly believe that if you take even the worst junk food and replace the seed oils with animal fats, you have greatly reduced the negative impact that that food will have on your health. As I mentioned earlier, polyunsaturated fats are not easy to avoid. However, it's your duty. Sugar and saturated fats are your friends. Don't avoid them. Also, subscribe. In all seriousness though, do what works for you.